This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. And today, again, I want to talk about this fuel incident, crisis, whatever you want to call it. Was it planned? Do they know what they're doing? It seems like the government isn't stepping in. There's price gouging, even in some states. This pipeline is supposed to be transporting fuel from pretty much the East Coast to the East Coast. But I've been hearing reports and I've been seeing comments on other videos where other states where this has no effect on them that the prices are going up. Now, I rode around and price prices have been going up. And today I went to a couple different places, well yesterday and today. And one of them, it, it's a gas, BP gas station, it was closed down. And they had that price on there that I showed. But gas is going up. Now, how much further is it going to go up? I saw, like, is it in Georgia or West Virginia, one of these places, people were filling up, and the prices, while they were waiting in line, the prices were going up, like, every couple minutes. And this one woman, she paid, like, you know, 30 some dollars for, like, six gallons of gas. They were charging $7 per gallon. Well, Candace, we know that experts are telling us that the price of gas will and is expected to continue to rise over the coming days. But if you're seeing a large spike in the matter of hours or even minutes, then you should definitely look for another place to fill up. Letha Kearney. It was a lot of people in there. No one looked at the price. Took a hit to the wallet. I had a half a tank of gas. So when it got to $25, I started looking to see what was going on. And after I got to $30, I was like, oh my God. When she unassumingly pulled up to a Richmond BP gas station on Williamsburg Road Tuesday. I spent $35.45 uh, to fill up my tank. Six gallons of gas for $35, that's absolutely ridiculous. She says it's double what she typically spent. Usually it's under $3. This BP service station has always been the cheapest and I didn't even look at the price before I started pumping. Cha-Cha lives just blocks away from the station and says she watched as the price climbed higher and higher. So then I drove up the road to get gas at a 299 gas station, which is a mile away, came back through here it's 599. Even in the span of our 15 minute interview. And now it's 659. And within a few minutes, that 659 was up to 699. You can't do that to people. After CBS 6 spoke with a store official about the prices, the sign was turned off and a store official said they were completely out of gas. This all happening hours after Governor Northam declared a state of emergency following the Colonial Pipeline ransomware cyber attack, leading to gasoline shortages in the state. In a statement, Attorney General Mark Herring warned the attack could not only create disruptions in the gasoline supply across the Commonwealth, he says, quote, unfortunately, bad actors could take advantage of this just to line their own pockets. That is crazy. And the government or the states or whatever are telling people not to panic. Don't top off your fuel tank. Don't be filling gas cans. To me, that makes no sense. I understand not hoarding gas, not stockpiling. It could be a, a hazard, first of all. But if we all go out and top our gas off and fill up fuel tanks and fuel containers, if they're price gouging, and like right here, I saw gas for 330, 340, 350. This is Pony Prepper Bill. Right now, I am in Shemung Township, I think it is, Route 206 at Mighty Joe's. That's a deli. You can get food here and gas. It's an Exxon, and let's take a look at their gas prices. This is the most I've seen it so far. And it's been slowly getting, you know, more and more and more. But if this pipeline shuts down or stays shut down for a little bit longer, just say another two weeks or a month, 
And if people are paying six dollars a gallon and seven dollars, I don't know how how high or how far this can go. But just say you're you're filling everything up. Maybe next week it'll come back on. But the problem, I mean, I don't even know where there's just so much involved in this whole situation. The first day in, President Biden stopped construction of that other pipeline. That was a mistake. Obviously, right now you can see that was a mistake. But they're saying that this is supposed to be on the East Coast, but it's affecting everywhere. And there's not a shortage of gasoline. It's a short of, shortage of transportation. Well, we already had the shortage of the transportation with the truck drivers and all. So how is, if they still have, whether that was up and running or not, we still had this problem. So just because it shut down has got nothing to do with the abundance of gas that we have not being delivered. If they are producing right now and it never happened, we still have the problem, so prices are going to go up. None of it, everything contradicts itself. They want to get rid of the gas. And when this whole pandemic hit and the lockdowns and quarantines, did you notice that, well, there's a lot of things I noticed that I won't go into, but one of them was the gas went down. Nobody was buying gas. Nobody was going to work. Nobody was going anywhere. And now they start opening things up, gas, like every summer. When the holidays come, 4th of July, Memorial Day, all that stuff, gas always goes up because it's, Everybody wants to gas. They make money. Well, once they started opening things up in quarantine and the lockdowns, they, they loosened everything up, the price went up like crazy. Now, if this price goes up and that pipeline opens back up again, will the price of gas go down? Will it go down that it, to what it was or will it stay at 3 4 5 dollars a gallon? Just say it goes up to seven dollars a gallon. Will they drop it back down to two fifty? I, I just I don't know where this is headed. I think this is all part of the new reset, the new world order. They want to get rid of gas. They want to get rid of carbon emissions. They don't want us driving pickup trucks and SUVs. They want us to drive little little electric cars that don't use up uh, you know fuel. But Back in the 70s, I don't know if anybody remembers the gas crunch and uh, there was lines at gas stations. They were running out of gas. And like it went by your registration and your tag number, odd, even. Certain times you could go get gas, certain times you couldn't. Like the water shortages, you know, every like odd, even house, your numbers, you could water your lawn or wash your car one day and the neighbor could do it a different day. But the whole thing in the 70s, they were trying to push the electric car. And it was starting to take off, but there was problems and issues with it. I'm getting bit up again. But anyway, the problem with the electric cars are batteries. One of the biggest pollutants in manufacturing at the time was the battery manufacturers. The smoke, the pollution, and then when the batteries are bad, they have to go somewhere and... I mean, ba batteries are bad, and everything we want to go solar with batteries and battery-powered cars. And Well, what happened in the 70s? It wasn't good in the 70s, but now it's good today to go green. None of it makes any sense. Everything contradicts itself with everything. It doesn't matter what it is. What's good for you? What's bad for you? The meat, the water. you got to drink water, and now there's plastic in the water. You can't drink bottled water. It's all... It's all bullshit. But, yeah, I saw the gas going up, as usual, but everything is around 3 to 3.10. And I forget what they were, but is this going to come down? Is it worth running out and wasting your gas now to get gas at 3? Well, like California was high, but I saw other states, their gas was like 150 last year. I don't think it's been 150 here in 20 years. Not that I remember. But is it worth filling everything up right now 
and storing this gas at a high thing in case it doesn't come back on or another thing I'm worried about is once this gas problem is solved or resolved one way or the other what's next is it going to be the power didn't Biden have say something well Obama said something about reducing he wanted to raise the price of gas so high that we would stop using our cars something in the lines of that and Biden wants to reduce emissions they want us to reduce how much we drive and go I think that's what the whole lockdown things were so we don't go out and during the lockdown they said that our environment for that whole year or eight months time the environment and the ecosystem everything was doing so much better there was less pollution so they might require more lockdowns because of uh, emissions and carbon footprint uh, they don't want us going out and I mean that was part of the agenda you know the population agenda for 2030 everybody move into the stack and packs and get away from the rural areas and move all closer together they don't want to ship things further away and the stores I've noticed you kind of know in the stores where everything is you know you know aisle 12 what you're looking for is halfway down they got a pallet one section I've noticed that the stores have been running out of things you'll go by one day and you'll see a bunch of empty shelves or empty area empty stuff here empty stuff here empty but what they're doing to make it look like they're not empty is they're spreading the stuff out like if you have cup of noodles or something here and coffee over here and are out of this instead of looking like you have all these bare areas they'll spread everything out wider on the shelves to make it look like it's full keep an eye on that uh, I'm thinking the power is going to be next getting everything delivered is a problem the gas is going to be a problem to for everybody to get to work to get goods to the store but then if the power goes out first of all if the power goes out you're you're not getting any fuel period anybody anywhere it's going to stop a lot of water you're not going to be able to get water city water septic systems or you know your your city water and the what do you call it the sanitation stuff all that's going to have a problem people are going to be getting sick but if the power goes out there goes the internet we're not going to be able to communicate with each other not so much just like you know here I won't be able to communicate with people 10 miles away I won't be get I won't be able to get a hold of my father my mother neighbors down the street or you know friends what's going on in your city the power's out when the power goes out you pretty much wait a couple hours it's going to come back on or it'll be tomorrow but when the power goes out here for like two days you know we got no phone no cell phone no internet so you drive to the gate you drive into town to find out what's going on but if they don't have power and then the next town doesn't have power we won't be able to communicate to find out what's really going on there's no more rallying and get together and let's protest this let's protest that because you're not going to be able to find anything out and there won't be any mail because there's no gas no electric there's no mail either so what do you think is next do you think this whole gas problem on the east coast with this pipeline do you think it's going to open back up in a couple days in a couple weeks do you think this is going to lead to more problems do you think prices are going to keep going up and then come down and what do you think is next? What do you think is around the corner for this new world order? Just my opinion of what's going on. This is Pony Prepper Bill, and let me know what you think. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.